Hey guys, Andy here from uh, Christ Central Preston. I'm one of the leaders at Christ Central Preston uh, alongside a whole range of amazing people who also lead and serve and make stuff happen uh, in CCP as it's known. Uh, I just wanted to share a little bit about what we're doing as a church but also uh, open up a little bit about money. Uh, money is a massive issue that many people uh, are both cynical about and suspicious about when it comes to churches so I thought do you know what maybe it's just worth me putting something out there which is kind of as transparent as I can be uh, so that people know where where things are up to where a little bit of more money gets spent as well uh, yeah like as, as a church what we're about is is allowing people to hear about who Jesus is and respond to him uh, that's what we're about we're real clear on what the Bible says we're continually teaching through it uh, if anyone wants to hold us to account against the Bible they they can do that we would love that to engage in those conversations so uh, that that's what we're all about but I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit uh, about about money and the whole area of funding and churches getting money and that kind of thing and probably most of us we've seen the like absolute uh, scumbag liars who are out there you see them on the God channel maybe they pop up on your YouTube and they're basically uh, they're basically people men and women who would say uh, you know you should give money to my ministry and if you do that then God will bless you uh, sometimes known as TV evangelists but in particular it's not just that they're talking about Jesus they seem to talk about money a whole lot and they seem to promise that if you give money to them funnily enough then God will bless you and that's an absolute lie uh, it's a horrible thing uh, it's known as the prosperity gospel and it's certainly something that I think's tainted for many of us our, our understanding of money in the church and uh, we did a we did a series some time ago where we asked people for their objections to Christianity and uh, one of the one of the big objections that was raised uh, was was actually related to uh, the Catholic Church. So I just want to read some out to you. Uh, this was what, what what one guy said. He was like, "This is this is my issue. Uh, th this is a family show, so I'm not gonna kind of uh, I'm not gonna share everything that he said here. But he, this is what he said. Uh, speaking about the church, they preach charity like he did, but the Pope sits on a golden." And I'll allow you to fill the blank in there and not explain that to your kids. He went on and said, The Pope and his golden is a metaphor for the wealth that the ch church holds yet does not share. Do you see that? that? That's the picture that that person had. And, and when, he, when he heard church, when he heard that we were a church, asking what's your big problem with Christianity, he said, You guys are rich. You, you've got so much and you don't share it with other people. And yeah, unfortunately, it's the, the wrong team. Like we're a different team, okay? We're not the Roman Catholic Church. Where the Bible is our highest authority, uh, teaching from the Bible. This is all about who Jesus is, Church. Uh, so we can't really defend those guys at all. There certainly is great corruption and uh, and greed that you do see expressed in certain areas uh, of that particular uh, religion. But uh, unfortunately, because of this, a lot of people judge all Christians based on these wrong understandings of wealth and how people spend money and that kind of thing and the reality is like Jesus died with uh, no kind of identified material wealth to his name uh, his, his, his apostles the people who followed him initially the first disciples uh, they themselves none of them died with any kind of riches to their name again uh, they, they were either killed or boiled in pots of oil and then died of old age and, and it, it wasn't like they became rich and uh, in fact, uh, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 17 says, like, unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. Th th this, this was the whole point of uh, Paul's defense of his own ministry was like, you know, we're, not trying to, we're not trying to sell God's word to you so that we can make money. The big thing that we're about, that it's not money. And, and for us as well as a church, we want that to be our heart. Uh, we want to be all about Jesus. Uh, and that's really what we've we've always always tried to be about. And to be honest, like we we've never been a rich church, and probably in part that's because we we very rarely ask for money. Uh, we don't come to people and say, "Can you can you give us money?" We don't. We haven't actually done any giving campaigns and anything like that. It's it's not something that we're particularly strong on. Uh, I know we were away a few weeks ago, and so a friend of mine came in. He actually did a, he actually did a talk on giving, but it, 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 no, we don't pass the basket around so people give. 
uh, there's no appeals made or anything like that. So we're, we're to be honest, pretty awful uh, uh, in that we don't ask for money. We, we just don't tend to do that. And since the start of the church plant, we've uh, been kind of living on a shoestring and a prayer. So uh, the church that sent us out, King's Church Kendall, very kindly gave us a laptop. Uh, so we use that. So we're very grateful for that. Uh, Community Church Blackburn actually gave us a uh, full kind of self-contained PA setup, uh, which we're really super grateful and helped us in the, in the first kind of year when we were meeting. Uh, we received uh, a couple of uh, like one-off gifts uh, from the Christ Central family of churches, which is part of New Frontiers, which we're a part of. Uh, and then also there's a, there's a small handful of people within the church who who give very kindly, not because they have to, but because they want to. So uh, those are some uh, some of the ways that money's come in. But overall, it's, it's like just by the grace of God, we've been managing to keep going. Uh, in, it was funny, you know, it was quite ironic, given all of I've just said in that we're not good at asking for money. We don't do it enough. Uh, a friend of mine put up a picture on Facebook and I think it, it may have been of me preaching, but I don't know. But either way, behind me was, was this banner. Uh, uh, it's like a pop-up banner, you know, like it, it packs down quite small and then you can pull it out and it and it shows stuff. Now, for us, the Bible is a huge thing. Uh, so we're, we're wanting to be really clear, trying to help people to engage with the, the series that we're doing, teaching through sections of the Bible. And so we're in the book of Ephesians. So we have this this banner printed. It says Ephesians, your place in, in God's story. Uh, and it was funny because my mate put this up on Facebook and then somebody commented about it saying, how rich are this church that, you know, <laughs> they, uh, they, they, they can afford to have a banner for preaching series? Well, firstly, <laughs> Uh, firstly, uh, this was back in January we started this series, so this banner is doing us for however many months right up till now. So it's it's done fairly well so far, but but I thought I would look it up, and the actual price of the banner was uh, thirty pounds ninety nine pence on it on eBay. Uh, I, I wonder how much people think these things cost. I mean, they've obviously never had to get anything printed like that, but uh, re really quite quite cheap when you consider that we value the Word of God that much. Uh, we really want to help people to engage with what's going on and remind people this is what we're about. We're about God's word. He speaks to us. He speaks authoritatively to us. He allows us to know our place in his story. Uh, and £30.99, I mean, many people, a couple of them might spend that going to the cinema of an evening, for example. So uh, it's not very much, really. Uh, in terms of running costs, you know, I thought, I thought I'd pull some of these things up. I mean, there's obviously kind of incidental costs uh, that... Uh, or like or just general running costs let's say to start off with so you've got like insurance uh, you've got Evangelical Alliance membership things like that they, they want a donation for that uh, and then you've got ongoing venue hire so we, we hire out a venue uh, to meet in on each Sunday so these these things certainly cost money uh, you've then got like kind of expense claims things that people bring in so I thought just like this as I said I wanted to be as transparent as possible as People uh, make expense claims for some things. Uh, they don't have to. If people want to just buy stuff themselves and, and give it to the church, that's great. But equally, we have a facility whereby they can make expense claims. So let, let's say we love to have uh, like uh, have food available to welcome people in uh, to meetings. So on a Sunday morning from like 10.15, people can come and have like croissants and pain chocolat and that kind of thing. Uh, so, And it's just our way of building community, loving people. If people can't afford food, then they can get food for free then, can't they as well? So... Uh, you know, that's one of the latest claims uh, uh, that I'm looking at. Pastries and juice, uh, that was 967. Uh, there were refreshments as well. Uh, the, there was a curry night that we as a church put on, so the 25 quid for that. Uh, music equipment as well. Uh, so music equipment was bought recently, so like PA stuff and that kind of thing. So that, that costs hundreds of pounds so sometimes to buy that stuff. Uh, yes yeah, speaker stand bag uh, let's just go if we pull up the very latest just because I know you guys want the very latest yeah donuts <laughs> donuts for a Sunday morning uh, we had a mission team over so there was various things that that we printed out like flyers we had uh, for evangelism we had both uh, basically connecting with people and like seeing what they know about Jesus. We had clipboards uh, and tr flyers that people could give out and some like sticky things with like the name of Christ Central Preston on and that kind of thing because we want to help people see who Jesus is so money's been spent on those things. An SD card, a room hire for something that we did. So th those are kind of to be honest like the the uh, ongoing costs that 
that we most regularly have. And then, uh, so that's from like the spreadsheet stuff. Like when, when we first started the church plant, I, I was keen to not be paid. Uh, that went on for quite some time, to be honest. I wasn't paid anything by the church plant for the first couple of years we were here. Uh, at some point last year, I can't remember when, I started getting paid one day a week. Uh, and we just moved it on to two days a week. Uh, that wasn't something that I uh, initiated, actually. Uh, I, to be honest, I've kind of I've held off on being paid by the church. Uh, I've always wanted all the money that comes into church to, to go into mission, to go into uh, running the church, helping people hear who Jesus is. Uh, reaching out to other people that's that's kind of been my heart and I know that there are certain kind of aspects of, of being paid by the church which I can, can actually make things a little bit more difficult to be fair uh, but either way uh, it, it it became practical and, and necessary for me to start getting paid so so I get I get paid a couple of a couple of days a week I probably do anywhere between three and five days a week of work for the church uh, but I, I currently get paid a couple of days so that's that's where uh, that's up to uh, so I just I wanted to just be totally upfront with that uh, and maybe help people to have a little bit of an insight. Like if you're that person thinking how have they afforded a banner? Banners are really cheap. Uh, but also just just to let you know a little bit about what we're doing as a church. So we're trying to help people hear about who Jesus is. You might be thinking and listening to this, going, you know, what? I'd love to help these guys. We would love to have you along and uh, you know have you part of the community. Come and get involved. We're doing something which is wonderful, uh, which is allowing people to hear about who Jesus Christ is, and he's meeting and he's meeting with people in this city. So please get involved. Uh, on the other hand. Uh, I'm planning on doing some more uh, little mini vlogs like this. So if there's any questions that you've got, this is probably a good uh, context in which they can be answered. There's some things that it's not very easy uh, to uh, either articulate in the length of a tweet or a Facebook post, uh, but equally not that easy to be talked about on Sundays uh, in the context of a Sunday talk. So I'm thinking this is a time as well, uh, if people have got questions, objections, problems, whatever it might be, feel free, just fire them over. And if I can manage to, if I've got time to, because there's a lot going on, then I would uh, I would love to be able to engage with those. Cheers, guys.